It was worth it. Oh, it's totally worth it. You forgot how much it cost. <laughs> I know. I sticker shock all over again. <laughs> Maybe a little too big. <laughs> Let's talk money. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to A Boulder Life Off Grid. Today we're gonna to talk about and break down the complete cost of our large 100% DIY solar system. We're gonna start here at our solar stand. The first thing that we purchased was this galvanized angle iron. This came from the scrap yard. We picked it up at 25 cents a pound and we took it and as you can see, some of these are square tubing. We weld all this angle iron into squares to make the posts. This total came out to $285 from the scrap yard. So that was a good deal for us. That was a good start to building this whole stand. We were able to get some of the Unistrep from the scrap yard, but not very many pieces. So most of it we had to purchase brand new from the store. That was a lot more than we paid for at the scrap yard. The total for the Unistrat brand new was $640. For all the other pieces of the stand, including concrete, nuts and washers, we had to buy galvanized paint for all the welds. Um, that was a total of $475 for all those little miscellaneous items. So for, to build this solar stand, we ended up spending $1,499. Now let's talk about the solar panels. These solar panels are from Solar World. They are grade A and they are 300 watts at 40 volts. Now we have 30 solar panels and we have them in the shape of a V, as you can see here. We have half of them, 15, facing southeast, and then we have the other half facing southwest so that we can catch the sun earlier in the morning and catch it later in the evening. With 30 panels at 300 watts a piece, that comes out to 9,000 watts worth of solar panels. And the total cost of those panels was $6,570. And now, coming in at $265, the Combiner Box. Ladies and gentlemen, we have here the Midnight Solar Combiner Box. Let's open it up, see what's inside. And inside our Combiner Box, we have three 300 volt 15 amp dc breakers here and then we have another three over here each one of these three breakers controls a row of the panels here so three rows here and we got three rows over there so these breakers were about 32 bucks a piece and the total cost of, of these plus we're including some of the, we got two fuses in, two main fuses in the powerhouse there. The total cost of all of that was $381. And now let's head over to the shed where we house all of our solar equipment. Welcome to our shed. Which is actually really becoming our powerhouse. Look at our power. Yeah, we got the light on. <laughs> we got right? light. <laughs> now we wanted to go through and show you all of our equipment here and kind of do a quick breakdown of how all the wires ran and what goes to what and kind of what order everything is wired together in. And as well, while we're doing that, go over the cost of all this stuff. Right. 
We need a bigger shed. This is actually a big shed. It is. This is 200 square feet. Plus it has a little loft up here that we got tons of stuff up there. Maybe we just have too much stuff. Yeah. Here's the conduit that runs out to our solar array. And we have two strings that come into here and make up on a terminal strip and connect to our EMP shields, which is our surge protection slash lightning protection. And they all tie into here, right? Then it comes out. Here's the two strings coming out. This is eight gauge welding wire. We needed welding wire so that we could surface mount it without having to put it in a conduit because you, you can't just run THHN across here. That's a code violation. So this goes, comes this way, and I kind of had to run it this way because all this other stuff was already here. This was the last wire I ran, and then it comes up and splits off, hitting this charge controller and then our other charge controller. Each charge controller does half of the array, as we showed you out there, it's split in half. Now, from here, where are we? You got these one gauge cables coming out. They come out, the positives hit these two breakers, and then they go down to the positive bus bar. The negatives come over to the negative bus bar, and that's where it goes from the bus bars through these four rock cables to another set of bus bars. Look at that. Now the reason we did that is because if anything ever had to be serviced here, we didn't just want our batteries to be in the way, sitting on the ground. And these things weigh a ton, by the way, if they ever had to get replaced, which I imagine these will last years and years. These are Victron. And so we're able to just disconnect the batteries here and then this is on wheels and can be rolled out of the way. Now let's talk about the cost. The number we're going to give you includes all this welding wire. You got four out wire, one gauge wire, eight gauge wire, um, six gauge wire for the ground there. This, this price also includes the wire which is eight gauge, by the way, that runs out to the array. And we had to do eight gauge because it was 130 foot, foot run. It includes all the lugs that we had to crimp onto the wires. It includes, this price also includes the conduit that we ran out to our solar panels. And there's two conduits. One of them is a spare for the future. What else does this include? It includes the wire in these conduits, which was two gauge that goes to our main breaker in here at 100 amps. And also the Just the heat shrink. Oh, and it includes the sheet rink. Okay. Sheet rink. What did I say? What? Did I say sheet shriek? <laughs> <laughs> it includes the heat shrink. <laughs> I talk backwards sometimes. My apologies. And so all of this together, and I'm probably missing a couple of things, but we got most of it. All of that together was $3,097. Wire, 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 wire. Also in that price we just shared, that also includes the lay-in lugs out on the solar panels, the ground that grounded and bonded all those solar panels, and as well the PV wire that is out there, which was 300 feet of PV wire to wire all those up. And MC4 connectors, am I right? Is that in that? Yes. It is. And the MC4 connectors. Okay, moving on. So, power comes in, goes over to the charge controllers, comes down to the bus bars, and it kind of splits up from here. You got going from the bus bars to the batteries, and from the bus bars, right here, here's our positives, uh, going through these fuses, one positive to each inverter, any negatives, right? To the inverters. These inverters are the Quattro 48 volt 10K inverters. They're both 10K, which means we have 20,000 watts worth of inverter sitting here. And the reason for that is we like power, right? 
Well, we want to run big things. We do. We need a 240 volts, so that's why we have two inverters. You need two to get 240 volts, at least of Victron. I know there's the all-in-one inverters that create 240. But we need a 240 because we want to use clothes dryer. We have a range. An electric range, an yeah. Electric range. Those are gonna pull a lot. And we've used the clothes dryer a few times and it's awesome. Working great, yeah. And uh, at, at its peak it pulls like six thousand watts. And in the when the sun is shining, the system doesn't even flinch. You know. So, price? Price of these inverters. $8,300. $8,300. Together, both of them. Yep. Total. That's the inverters. Charge controllers. These charge controllers are the MPPT 250 100, which means you can max them out at 250 volts or 100 amps, or I believe the watts were 4,800. A piece and the cost of those were $1,847. Now moving to the Servo GX and the I believe it's called the GX50 touchscreen. It's the touchscreen. You can get this size or you can get one that's a little bit bigger. The bigger one I think was a seven inch. This is a four or five. I don't know. But the cost of this stuff, and this stuff wasn't necessary, but we, we added it to our system because we wanted to monitor it and see what's going on like that. These were $627. You forgot how much it cost. <laughs> I know, a sticker shock all over again. This isn't good for my health. <clears throat> okay. Bus bars? We didn't... Yep. We have two kinds. We do. We have two Super different simple. types of bus bars, okay? They're both the same brand, which is Blue Sea Systems. These two are rated at 1,000 amps. And the two on the battery box are rated at 600 amps. We wanted 1,000 amps, but couldn't find them, at least fast enough. You can get them online. So... 1,000 amp bus bars, and then two 600 amp bus bars over here. We just have to be careful not to hook up too many batteries to them. Right now, they're they're totally fine. They could actually take about two more batteries. And these these things are just pieces of metal. Like they these are an arm and a leg. What tell what's the thousand amp? The thousand amp is four hundred and thirty eight dollars for those two. For a piece of metal, it does nothing. Just connects, I don't know. Okay, and then the 600 amps down here. I'll show them down here. There they are, two of them, positive, negative. Okay, cost of these were? 280. $280. So that's what, like three, five, six, Seven hundred and hundred dollars. Seven hundred and eighteen bucks. In bus bars. Right here we got this inch and a quarter Carflex conduit, and one here. They come into our main panel. This is a Siemens two hundred amp panel. However, we only have a hundred amp main breaker because that is what all of this is rated for is 100 amps. If we ever wanted to do 200 amps, we'd actually have to get two more of these bad boys. So Siemens panel, got all our breakers. Total cost of that was $170. Now that the AC side, we got the price on that. I need to backtrack a little bit and talk about the EMP shield devices we have. We've got four of them, okay? This one protects line one and line two of the AC sides, the AC phases, whatever you want to call it, in here. And then we've got this one here, which is for the 48 volt system. This one here is connected to our two strings that go out to the arrays. And this one here, where the light's not on, is actually 
we'll do the same thing, does the same thing as this one. It's just made for one string though. We'll use that later on in the future. We, uh, we actually, I think, accidentally ended up buying that one thinking we needed it, but right now we don't. But we're gonna keep it because we do plan on using it, like I said. Now these things, EMP shield is supposed to is supposed to be really good at surge protection, lightning protection. There's uh, videos out there that talk about the EMP shields and how much they can handle, and they're not really made to take a direct lightning strike. I don't think anything is, but there are stories where they have taken direct lightning strikes and they protected all the equipment on the other side of it. So I'm excited to have these, but I'm not excited about how much they cost us because <laughs> it made our price go up a little bit. They were, what were they? $1,506. $1,506. Anyway, we're protected. Moving on to the batteries and this giant battery box that we built to house our batteries. It is made out of plywood, two by fours. It's got tongue and groove on the sides and it is insulated to keep our batteries warm through the winter. As you can see, it doesn't have doors yet, but we'll be building those real quick. We had a couple projects that required some more immediate attention and then we'll put the doors on. We have two shelves in here so we can expand our batteries in the future. What We can hold five on the bottom and we can put five more depending on how our needs, as we run this system, as we learn what, what our needs really are. Um, our battery box is on wheels. There's eight of them just because it's so heavy. Um, that way, as you saw, we can roll it in and out out of the way as we need to get back into there. The total cost for just this battery box was way more than I thought it should be. $578. Why'd you spend that much money? Why did you spend that much we money? We should have built this out of cardboard. <laughs> but we want our batteries. The batteries were the biggest price tag. They so are expensive. We better take care of them. We have five Sacred Sun 48 volt 100 amp hour batteries. And these are the big sticker shock because these do not come cheap. One battery costs $2,250. So for all five, we spent $11,250 on these five batteries. With that being said about the batteries, these batteries are 4,800 watts a piece. So we have a battery bank with a total capacity of 24,000 watts. If you want a system that's just like ours, that has 9,000 watts worth of solar panels, 20,000 watts worth of inverter power, and 24,000 watts of batteries, then it will cost you, it will cost you. And this is the DIY, 100% DIY cost of our system. $37,043.15. Uh, $37, is that what you said? Thousand, thousand. Okay, now you can't see me. Hat on backwards time. There we go. Now my eyes are shaded. It was worth it. Oh, it's totally worth it. I. We loved every minute of this. Uh, the whole design and everything was fun and awesome. And if you're new here, go back and watch the whole build, man. You're gonna wanna see it. The, the racking was probably my favorite part. Building the rack, racking system for these panels was fun. It was a lot of welding. My favorite part was putting up the solar panels. Oh, your favorite, that was fun. That, that's it went changed fast. it quick. Yeah, it changed and it, the look. Yes, that was the thing. It went fast, so it was like nothing to something in like two days. And so that was exciting. Right. Before we 
even moved out here, I was looking into the cost of solar equipment and I I got a one price from another company down in Phoenix here, down in the valley, and they actually didn't sell equipment to anyone. They weren't into the DIY market, right? They were just installers. And so they were telling me, yeah, well, we could we could put one in for you. Uh, and they were saying it was a 10K system and they could put it in for maybe, he was giving me a ballpark number, maybe as low as $60,000, but as upwards as like 80,000 or more. And I was just like, wow. <laughs> uh, thank you, but no thank you. <laughs> uh, so we saved how much money on labor, right? We're the laborers. <laughs> yeah. Free labor. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to say is you maybe you are wondering, is there anything that we would have done differently? Oh yeah, I was gonna mm. ask you that. The one thing I would change though is maybe try to make the battery box smaller. It's kind of huge. Uh yeah, when I walked in on you building that, I was like, uh <laughs> What's that for? What is that giant thing? Another thing I would have done differently. I don't... We have good batteries. They're they're good. But... You're a little disappointed. We are. They, they actually don't communicate to our Victron monitoring system. So that's kind of annoying. I mean, the, the Victron display can show us the voltage of the battery which kind of gives, gives us an idea of the state of charge of the battery. And the battery does have the four LED lights to indicate how much power is in the battery. But I really wanted them to talk talk to the, the monitoring system. But apparently Sacred Sun is one of those brands that haven't gotten with the... What am I looking for? Times. Gotten with the times, you know. <laughs> Victron is a big name, you know. Anybody watching this that makes and sells batteries, make sure they can talk to the Victron stuff, will ya? Come on. Yeah, we did go Victron because we wanted good quality. Right. Um, we were looking at cheaper inverters and equipment and stuff, but we were looking far ahead. We don't want to have problems with our system. We're, we were going for as low maintenance as we could. So Victron was the way to go, right? I mean, you have all these all-in-one systems, and they work. And, of course, this is just me talking my opinion. I just don't opinion. think that uh, that's the way to go. Because what if your charging controller inside of that unit goes out? Well, then what do you do? Do you replace the, the entire uh, apparatus of that? You know, because you got your inverters in there, charge controller monitoring system in there in those all-in-one deals so victron just has a good track record they have we, yes that's why we went very good went with the higher they're very expensive it is Ugh. but hopefully that pulls out in the long run it will for us, it'll so. work good so yeah the batteries we have they're good batteries we just uh you know i wish they could talk to the the victron equipment but all in all, we are super happy about yeah. everything. One last thing I remembered I wanted to talk about was the size, like why our system is big. We've talked to people around like where we live and stuff, and they're like, whoa, you're building a huge system. And the thing that we want is to be completely self-reliant I guess on our power. A lot of people do solar for some and then they need propane to support all their other systems. So we went big because we have an electric range. I don't want to have to pay for propane. Um, over and over and over and again. And have to have someone come out here. And one depend of our, on someone to deliver it. Yeah. So one of our big things why we went big with our system was because we want to be able to produce all the power we need and not have to rely on someone else to provide it for us. Yeah. That's a pretty good explanation right there. Go big or go home. So <laughs> I what I always say. Yep. Even on battery boxes. <laughs> Maybe a little too big. <laughs> mm, yeah.
All right, guys, we are checking That's out. It. Thank you for watching this video. We hope that you enjoyed it. And we hope you enjoyed our transparency of all this stuff because we know a lot of you are interested in it. We know a lot of people want to have solar for themselves. And so I hope this gives you a good idea. And we have a whole playlist full of like the different components going up for different videos. So check, check those out. out if you're interested in any of those different sections or all of them. Yep. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends. You don't want your friends to miss out, do you? Do you? <laughs> I don't think so. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. and $25. What? <laughs> At 40 volts. Awesome. Lost my train of thought. One half is facing southwest, and we have another half facing southeast. And actually, that's southwest. This is southwest. Do we start over? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So with each panel at thir three, you've got three, uh, 300 volt. I don't know, because Natalie hasn't told me that no. I don't know either. The heat shrink. Oh, and it includes the sheet rink. Okay. Sheet rink. What did I say? What? Did I say sheet shrink? <laughs> <laughs> it includes the heat shrink. <laughs> How do I get out of here? Put down here is uh, going to be is a, ended up being a spare. I got a cat problem. Ended up being a spare. It says we plan on.